Hey all, it's Hunter. In this video, I'm very excited to show you website localization in Framer. And website localization is about more than just adding more languages. It's about creating a site that adapts and feels local to the people that are viewing it. And that is what we focused on enabling with the features in this video. And we've optimized it to work on anything from the smallest sites to the biggest sites that run on Framer. And to show how it works on big sites, we'll be localizing a page on Framer.com. We're going to translate the Meetups page because it's a great example of a page that benefits from localization. So wherever someone might be, they can have a great experience finding and hosting a local Meetup. If we hop right in, you'll notice there's a new globe icon in the toolbar. This is where you'll find the localization view. Once we're in here, we'll see a prompt to add a new locale. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll start by adding Dutch because we're based here in Amsterdam. You'll see we're able to select either just Dutch itself or select a more specific region for the language. We're also able to select a fallback. This means whenever something hasn't been translated, whether a specific piece of text or an entire page, it'll just show this fallback language instead. We're also gonna add Chinese just to use something that doesn't have Latin characters. Once you have added a locale, you can see that every single piece of text and every image in your project is now in this table. We could go through this table and translate our entire site from right here. But in our case, we're going to the filter action in the toolbar. So we just see the items for the meetups page. And then we can just go ahead and start translating. I'm still learning Dutch, so I'm going to go with the easy one here. Framer meetups can probably be translated to just Framer meetups. And if we hit enter, we'll see this item is now marked as done. And we can go ahead and start translating our entire page. We even support image translations. If we wanted to say show a meetup photo from another country, and we can also translate the alt text. For formatted text fields, CMS content, or even just text with links in it, we'll get a bit more space to work in the localization overlay. But let's say I just want to get the translation started and then have one of my Dutch colleagues take a look at it and tweak it after. That's where AI translations comes in. If we hit the translate button, the AI starts translating right away. And we've optimized it to carry over things like links, videos, images, and keep them in line just where you'd expect them. We can take this a step further to have the AI translate the entire page. This is perfect for when we want to start playing with the content and focusing on the other aspects of localizations before we polish up the translations themselves. We'll give the AI a second to translate everything. And there we go. And we'll head back to the canvas. But we want to get a sense of what our page actually looks like in Dutch. This is where the canvas view comes in handy. If we look down in the canvas toolbar, we'll see this new icon that allows us to select a locale. If we select Dutch, we are now viewing the Dutch translation right on our canvas. Here we're able to edit all the translations in context. So for instance, this heading breaks onto four lines, but I'd like to adjust it to two if we can. I've quickly consulted with a Dutch colleague and they gave me some tips on how to get this onto two lines. And that's looking much better. So these are the kind of things that are really nice to have the canvas view for. We can also pan around and check out the rest of our page. We'll see dates are automatically localized and everything else is looking pretty good. Now that we have the foundation for our Dutch translation, we can go ahead and publish the site and all the HTML things you'd expect for a localized website are going to be handled for you. Things like hreflang is already set up for each locale that you add. This means that people coming from search engines will get the right version of the site. But if we want to let people choose their language, we can go to the insert menu and insert a locale picker. The locale picker component will always stay in sync with the locales in your project. So all you need to do is set up the styling. I'll do that now and pop it in our nav. I'm going to remove the background color, add a little icon, remove the text, and I think we should be good. And I'll publish the site to get a feel for the beginnings of our localized page. This release brings with it an enhanced version of our optimization process that takes the pages for each locale and runs them in parallel, 
to keep that fast optimization speed, no matter how many locales you have in your project. If we go to the locale picker, we can go to the Dutch version of our page, and it's looking great. And a key part of the architecture of this feature was ensuring that the localized versions of your website are just as fast as the base language. That was the core workflow of localizing your site in Framer. So now let's finish up those translations, and then we'll end the video with something really cool. I'm going to ask some colleagues to help translate this page. And there's a specific translation here that I want to get looked at, so I'm going to mark it as needs review. This flag also happens automatically when something that's already been translated changes in the base language. And another workflow tip, if we want to only see things that are a specific status, like to review, you can do that with the drop down in the top right. All right, I'm back with some fresh translations from my colleagues, and let's finish up this site. Our Dutch translation's looking great, our Chinese translation's looking great, but it's missing that last little bit. What if we want to customize and adapt more than just the content of our website? That's where this last feature comes in. To allow you to push locale customization to limits, we've added a variable with the current locale that is accessible anywhere in your project. This means you can add logic to nearly anything in your Framer project based on what the active locale is. If this sounds complex to you, don't worry, I'll show a quick example to illustrate, and I will add a link to another video we have specifically on this topic. I've converted this hero section to a component with three variants, each with a different accent color and a different city highlighted on the globe component. If we select it, we can go to variant, click on the little plus here and go set variable, locale, convert option. This enables us to set up some logic that says when the current locale is English, set the variant to New York. When the current locale is Dutch, set the variant to Amsterdam. And when the current locale is Chinese, set the variant to Shenzhen. And a fallback to say when it doesn't match any of these languages, just use this variant. And now we can change the locale on the canvas to see this in action. Yes, that is perfect. Now we can publish our site and check out our localized meetup page. Looks great. With the locale variable in Framer, you can make your websites truly localized for whoever may visit your site. That's been Localizations in Framer. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.